Hi, good day everyone. I am Adrian Palmer, and today I'll be presenting on diet and obesity management. This is a part of the Overweight and Obesity series that is being conducted by the Aruka SDA Church Health Ministries Department. So the contents of today's presentation will be looking at diet and weight loss. We will also be looking at why some diets fail. We'll be discussing a little bit about carbohydrates and fats and those kind of things because we know that a lot of persons are still confused in terms of what are fats, what are carbohydrates. We'll be breaking down that information and then we'll be looking at an effective diet strategy that is good for weight loss. And also in between the presentation, we'll be considering spiritual aspects of diet and weight loss and that kind of thing. First, it's very important that when a person is trying to manage their weight or a person is trying to lose weight, that they look into their diet because it has been proven in research that gaining or losing weight and gaining the experience of weight loss, 75 to 80% of that is contributed to diet. So a lot of persons normally think it's exercise and you have to burn calories, burn fat and all of that. But it's not necessarily so. If you want to really lose weight, 75 to 80% of the weight that you lose will be depending on how you control or change your diet. So it's the most single most important intervention. I we're going to discuss today what strategy is best. Listen to this reading taken from Ministry of Healing. I found it important to share it with you. Chapter 23, and it says, foods should be chosen that best supply the elements that are needed to build up our bodies. But plenty of times when we eat, we eat because of what we feel to eat and not because of what our body needs. And here, Sister White is saying that appetite is not a safe guide. And it says also that through wrong habits of eating, the appetite has become perverted. And that is even true now as though it was 100 years ago. And they say appetite that is perverted often demands food that impairs our health and it causes weakness instead of strength that we need from our food. And here, very touching and very applicable to our time now, the disease and suffering that is everywhere that prevails prevails throughout the world is largely due to popular errors in regards to diet. So the issue of diet is good that we, that we look into it in terms of health and in terms of also losing weight because the wrong attitude or the wrong approach to diet will instead of giving us strength and building up our bodies, will give us diseases and problems and errors in health. So the issue of diet is a really important one. And I'm sure that a lot of persons watching this presentation would have said that, well, um, I have tried a lot of diets and plenty of times I lose the weight and um, as I look, the weight comes back, right? So, so why some strategies fail? So as I said, diets, they have been very effective in the short term, different diets, keto days and, you know, all those different things. But the problem is, is that plenty of these special diets, they're difficult to sustain. So a lot of persons who do it, you lose the weight. But as time lapse, right, you find yourself gaining back the weight. Why? Because some of the deaths that they would have practiced is things like um, telling you that take out the carbs or take out the fats, take out these kind of things, they eliminate them. But what happens that after a while, the body responds now with hunger because you have restricted so much food from your body right? Your body responds by, 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 by giving you that sensation, that need, that hunger. And when you start to eat again, what you end up doing, you start to eat more than what you had lost. So instead of you end up losing weight, the overall experience is gaining even more weight. And so that's become frustrating for a lot of people who are trying to lose weight. But there is a proven effect dietary strategy that has shown to contribute significantly to weight loss. And that is decreasing carbs or carbohydrates. So eating less of carbs and carbohydrates and eating healthy fat. So it's not eliminating carbs and eliminating fats, but encouraging healthy fats and decreasing carbohydrates. But a lot of persons 
at times become confused in terms of what are carbs, what are fats, what are these things. So we're going to discuss these things more in depth. All right, so carbs. So if you look at my picture right here on your screen, all these things are considered carbs, breads, beans, peas, nuts, pasta, potatoes, fruits, yam, all those things. All of these are considered carbs, but we have good carbs and we are what we say healthier carbohydrates and we also have unhealthy carbohydrates or bad carbohydrates. Let's discuss the ones that are healthy and the carbs that are healthy are things that are called whole grains, vegetables, fruits, beans, you know, the ones that are unprocessed and are minimally processed. They, they, they haven't gone through the factory to, to, to transform it into something else. It's more natural, very minimally processed or unprocessed. These are the best or the good or the healthier carbohydrates for our body. Let us look briefly at the experience of Daniel's diet. This was discussed a little bit in one of our previous presentations. When you read Daniel chapter one, verses 11 and 14. And it, it gives the experience where Daniel and the other Hebrew boys were offered the diet that the Babylonians ate and they refused. And Daniel said, um, give us vegetables. In the King James Version, you see the word pulse. And he said, give us vegetables to eat and water to drink. And as it goes down in verse, um, um, verse 14, he said, they look what? Healthier and stronger than those who had been eating the royal food. I choose to use a good news translation because in the King James translation, it said they look fatter. But fatter doesn't mean that they were obese or they were round. It just means they look healthy and they look stronger. So that's why I use a good news translation. So let's look a little bit more in terms of th these vegetables that Daniel eat. Was it, was it just lettuce and, and cabbage and, and um, you know salad? No. I'm telling you, it, it wasn't just that. Because the word for pulse or vegetable that is used in Daniel chapter one is, is the Hebrew word zero. Zero actually refers to any type of seed type food. So that will include fruits, it could include nuts and plenty of vegetables because even most of the vegetables that we have now actually could be planted from seeds. So anything that could come from seeds, that is what Daniel was referring to. And also, the root word for zero is Zara or Zera, right? This word is found in Genesis 129 when God said, Behold, I've given you every herb bearing seed, which, and that word for seed is Zera, which is upon the face of all the earth and every tree in which is the fruit of tree, um, the fruit of tree healing seed. And you get the same zero there again. And it says to you, it shall be for meat and by meat to know that it meant food. So what is this telling us, right? That the diet that Daniel wanted to have was not just salads. It, when he say wanted vegetables and pulse, he never just want peas and beans and, and vegetables alone. He wanted the original diet. He wanted a more natural diet, a diet that was designed for us by God. He wanted the diet that um, consists of whole plant food, that it wasn't pro processed, it wasn't refined. He wanted whole foods. And remember what we said are the healthier carbohydrates. The healthier carbohydrates are those that are unprocessed, are minimally processed, such as whole grains, vegetables, fruits, and beans. So the, the, the healthier carbohydrates would be those that even Daniel wanted to eat. And remember, he described Daniel and them when, when, they, when the diet that they had, that they looked better and they were healthier, they were stronger, they were smarter. So our healthier carbs, to wrap it up, are those that are less processed, minimally processed, the more natural, the more the whole foods, right? Those are the better ones. Listen to this coming from same uh, Ministry of Healing. It says that, Grains, fruits, nuts, and vegetables constitute the diet chosen for us by our creator. And he said that these foods when prepared in what? A simple and natural manner as possible are the most what? Helpful and nourishing. So they impart a strength, a power of endurance, vigor of intellect that are not afforded by more complex and stimulating diet. So it's saying here to us, 
that eating the food as natural as possible is actually best for us than eating food that we like because it tastes good. That is not the way. And when we eat like our God has designed for us to eat, we gain more health benefits. So those are the healthier carbs. That discussion of healthier carbs. Now let's look at the unhealthy carbs. And these are the ones that we should either avoid or reduce. Because we know that in the weight loss journey, it, it won't be easy for some persons to just cut out everything. But the bad things we have to reduce until we could get them out. Right? Unhealthier carbs. Examples of healthier carbs. Unhealthier carbs are like white bread, plenty of the pastries that we like, sodas, and almost all those other foods that are highly processed or refined. So the more they process the food to make it taste better to us is actually the unhealthier the food becomes. <laughs> Look at that, right? And these foods, right, the unhealthier ones are easily digested. Well, when you're easily di digested, you're probably thinking that, hey, this should be better. No, easily digested means that it breaks down into sugar quicker into the system. And when that happens, it sends your blood sugar up higher at a faster rate, which is not good. These unhealthier carbohydrates may contribute to weight gain. And we don't want to gain weight. We actually want to have a normal weight or for our overweight and obese persons who want to lose weight. So we have to, un we have to avoid the unhealthier carbohydrates. Right, and not only do they affect how we gain weight, they also promote diabetes and heart disease. So it's good to get out these unhealthier carbohydrates out of our diets. So let's look at fats. We always hear about fats, right? What are fats? There are good types of fats and there are bad types of fats. And let us discuss the better fats or the good fats, right? Good fats are what we call our unsaturated fats. These types of fats actually improve blood cholesterol, they control inflammation, and they stabilize heart rhythms, right? So when your person is trying to lose weight, you cannot cut out fats. There are some fats that are actually essential and good for you. And the unsaturated fat are mainly found in plant foods. We're going back to Daniel again. In vegetables, vegetable oils or plant-based oils, nuts, and seeds. So we go straight back to the Daniel diet. So basically, before I even go any further in the presentation, so the diet that was best suited for maintaining a healthy weight or losing weight was actually the diet that Daniel wanted. Look at that. The answer has been in the Bible for thousands of years, right? So our unsaturated fats are found mainly in plants. You have two types of unsaturated fats. You have monounsaturated fats and polyunsaturated fats. But just remember that unsaturated fats are good fats with a mono or poly. Once you're unsaturated, they are good fats, right? So these are found mostly in things like olive oil, peanut oil, canola, canola oil, avocados. Here we have our avocados. Some persons call it zabuca, right? Also in our nuts like almonds, hazelnuts, pecans, even peanuts and those things. Seeds like pumpkin seeds, sesame seeds, you find good monounsaturated fats. Polyunsaturated fats, which are also good fats, these you find them in high concentration in sunflower, in sunflowers, corn, sunflower oil, corn oil, soybean oil, flaxseed oils. You find a lot of that in those things. You're also in walnuts and flax seeds and in fish and any source of omega-3 fats like fish, flax seeds, etc. You found you will find polyunsaturated fats. And you would also realize that. In some, of the, in some of these foods, you would find different types of fats. So you would find monounsaturated fats, you find polyunsaturated fats. But once it's unsaturated fat, it's good fat. And we have out, and I've outlined the various sources where we could get it. I know that the major source of unsaturated fats is plant-based foods. Saturated fats, which is questionable whether they are bad or good for us based on our current scientific reviews. But saturated fats are the opposite of unsaturated fats. So the saturated fats are mainly found in animal foods, so like meat and milk and anything that is made from animals. You find a lot of saturated fats. But it said that a diet that has plenty, un um, plenty saturated fats, it will increase the total cholesterol and encourage the harmful cholesterol to so build up. 
It's also said that saturated fats will increase the risk of artery disease. So it could cause clots in your heart, um, your, your brain and that kind of thing. And they encourage weight gain. There's still a little bit of debate over, you know, whether this is fully scientifically proven or not, but the association has been seen in the past. So saturated fats are fats that persons who are trying to become healthier or you're trying to lose weight, you'd have to try to cut back on saturated fats. And as we said, these are mainly found in animal foods. So if you want to learn how to or know how to avoid saturated fat, eat less animal products. Trans fats. Trans fats are what we call trans fatty acids. These are actually the bad guys. Right, so these are actually made from vegetable oils. A good healthy vegetable oil, they, 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 they put it through a process, so they basically process it. And I would say the more they process the food, is basically the more unhealthy it comes. So when they process the vegetable oil, right, they develop what they call trans fats, right? But why, why they still use a lot of trans fats? When you cook with trans fats, or repeated heating and you're using it over and over. It doesn't spoil easily and it lasts long. It doesn't become rancid. And that is why a lot of fast food restaurants would buy trans fats or a lot of companies that bake goods will use trans fats or a lot of companies that make snacks will use trans fat because this type of oil, it la it, because it's processed, it lasts longer and it's less easily easily spoiled. So that's why a lot of companies that manufacture food will use this. A lot of fast food restaurants would use these, but these are not the good, these are not good fats. These are actually fats we want to avoid. So trans fat, they are naturally found in beef, in, so like in beef fat and in dairy fat, you find trans fat naturally, right? Without being processed or anything, it's naturally there. Um, as I say, hydrogenated or partially hydrogenated vegetable oils or any oils, once you look on the label and you see contains trans fat, good, those are hydrogenated oils, good. Also margarine or shortening, fried fast food, bakery products, pizza, potato chips and corn chips, these contain a lot of trans fats. And, and I've explained to you why, why they would have used trans fats in the manufacturing of these products. What's wrong with trans fats? So I said trans fats are the worst fats for the heart, the blood vessels on the body, right? These types of fats actually increases the bad cholesterol and lowers the good cholesterol. And we don't want, want that. And it also increases inflammation. And when we have increased inflammation in the body, that puts us at risk of heart disease, stroke, diabetes, cancer, and those kind of things. And a next point, why persons who are trying to lose weight or to control the diabetes should avoid trans fat is because they encourage insulin resistance. I know that insulin resistance is associated with developing more fatty tissue in the body. So if you're trying to lose weight, you have to cut out the trans fats out of your diet. So now that we understand the different types of fats and the different type of carbohydrates, let us discuss now what is the best strategy are the best way known to science so far to help a person to lose weight in a sustainable manner. And that is what we're trying to achieve, a sustainable manner of losing weight and eating better. So we need a diet that is low in carbs or carbohydrates and a diet that supports healthy fat. Let's get into it. So what are the things we have to reduce or remove from our diet? Let's look at the carbs. Because we say we have to get low on the carbs. And as I said, some persons might not be able to cut out everything, but some of these things, they have to be reduced because a lot of people gaining weight are consuming too much of these things. And that is a big factor in them gaining weight. So sweeten any sugar sweetened beverage. So for example, soda. And so we have some pictures here that you could see sodas, plenty of fruit juices, plenty of flavored drinks and milks and coffees and teas. They have plenty of sugars in them and sugars are carbohydrates. And these could contribute to insulin resistance, which will also lead to developing more fatty tissue and gaining weight. So we have to reduce or cut out these sugar sweetened beverages. If you're also trying to lose weight, you have to reduce starchy food. 
So like pasta, rice, potatoes, ground provision. Am I saying ground provision is bad? No, I'm not saying it's bad. But as discussed in our previous presentation, our plate in the Caribbean, we put too much carbohydrates. So while starchy foods could be good, we put too much in our plate and that is where the problem is. So we have to cut down. So half of our plate in the Caribbean is normally starchy foods. We have to cut that down to about quarter, especially for our ground provisions and all of that. Pasta and white rice are processed carbohydrates. So those are even worse than the potato. Those who contribute to more sugars in your body faster. So you have to cut down on the pasta and the white rice, especially and the provisions and the potatoes and those things, you have to be temperate with how you eat those. Processed grains. So processed grains, we have to reduce those things as well if we want to lose weight. So like white bread, we have to reduce the white bread. And bread products like muffins, crumpets are, some, are things like pancakes, bakes, various fried bake, roast bake, all the different kind of bake, roti. Yes, I come in with that. Biscuits. And plenty of breakfast cereals that we eat have a lot of sugar and carbohydrates in them. So we have to reduce these things. If we don't reduce these things, we can't yourself losing weight. So we definitely have to reduce these products. Also, sugars are hidden in a lot of products, some that we even think healthy. So like our oats bars and granola bars, Plenty of times they have a lot of sugar in them. Plenty of yogurts have a lot of sugar in them. So we have to reduce these things if you're trying to lose weight. You might say, no, I only eat a yogurt in the morning and a yogurt in the evening. I don't eat plenty of food. But plenty of these yogurts and plenty of these granola bars that you think are healthy and you're only eating these things and cutting out other foods that might be beneficial to you, you're still gaining weight or maintaining the weight because these things have a lot of sugar contributing to insulin resistance and which eventually contributes to weight gain. In the Caribbean, especially in Trinidad, everybody likes a lot of sauce and a lot of dressing. But the sweet truth or the not so sweet truth about these savory items is that they contain a lot of sugar. So if you do your own research, you will see a lot of hidden sugars are in these things. So when you eat a lot of it on your plate, you're still putting a lot of sugars in your body, even though it doesn't taste sweet. So we have to reduce sauces, dresses, flavored yogurts, and the oat bars are the muesli that we commonly eat if we're trying to lose weight. So let's look, so those are the carbohydrates. Let's focus on the fats. So we have to decrease or eliminate the bad fats and encourage the good fats. So on my left right here, we have the, the, the fats that we need to reduce. So saturated fats, and I say which are found mainly in animal products. So if you want to decrease saturated fats from a diet, decrease the amount of animal products that they use, to animal milk, meat, and those kind of things. You have to decrease that. Trans fat. I would say trans fat are found mainly in what? Fried fast food, plenty of bakery goods, snacks, the processed snacks. Good. These are, these are made a lot of trans fats. So you have to cut down these things or eliminate them from the diet if you want to lose weight. Animal fat, dairy fat, I mentioned that already, margarine, shortening, you have to reduce those things out of your diet and encourage the good fats. So any plant-based vegetable oil, whether it be regular vegetable oil, canola oil, peanut oil, um, oil from seeds, you know, those are good oils to use. Eating your nuts, your seeds, fish is much better than um, regular animal meat because of the type of fats. Fish has the healthier fats compared to the trans fats and the saturated fats that are found in animals right, omega-3 fats and things like our avocado and those kind of things that have healthier fats for us. So don't eliminate those fats. Those are the fats that you should encourage that are on my right side of the screen. So what we are seeing to a person trying to lose weight, focus on whole plant foods, foods that are less processed, less refined, right, are minimally processed. And even those good foods, because a lot of persons don't eat the good things, but they eat too much of it. So there must be some temperance. Don't eat until you feel stuff. Eat until, you know, your appetite is satisfied. Once it is satisfied, that's good. You don't have to eat until you feel full. 
You don't have to eat until your appetite feels satisfied. So focus on your whole grains, your vegetables, your fruits, you know, your provisions and those things, but be temperate. And I said, remember Daniel, remember Daniel's diet. Next, so what is the overall benefit? Look how this will work. Number one, you will reduce the carbs, especially the unhealthy carbs and the healthy carbs, we eat it in temperance. Then we reduce or eliminate trans fats. Once we do those, the amount of insulin in our body will be less because our body would have to be producing less insulin to break down all that food in the body. And once the insulin in the body is less, then insulin resistance will be reversed. And once you start to reverse insulin resistance, the patient or the person will now start to lose weight and also gain other health benefits. And that is what we're trying to achieve in terms of changing up the diet to gain um, the health benefits and to lose weight. I put in this research and there are many other research like this. This was done in 2009. And what was found was that 70 Adventists who are vegetarian, so whether they be vegan, strict plant-based diet, or they only eat milk and egg, or if they are like a pesco vegetarian, meaning they only eat fish and, and plant-based foods. When they compare these 70 Adventists to the non-vegetarian 70 Adventists, the, 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 the vegetarian seven day Adventists had lower body mass index. That means, you know, they, they, were, they, they were less obese, less overweight, right? Their waist circumference was less, meaning they, ne they never had big bellies and their fat mass was less. So probably adapting a plant-based diet might be very useful to a lot of persons who are trying to lose weight. Because even as we explain that in a more plant-based diet, the, 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 the carbohydrates will be healthier and the fats will be the healthy fats and not the bad fats. So studies show it, it's proven effective. We know this for over a hundred years. So, so, so let's try to adapt a more plant-based diet or, 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 and cut back on meat, trans fats, unhealthy carbohydrates, if we want to lose weight. The information is there, but it will only be possible if you try to achieve it. So some spiritual encouragement on this journey of losing weight and achieving an ideal weight. And why we want to lose weight? In our previous presentations, we would have explained what, why is obesity and overweight a serious crisis and a problem. So some spiritual encouragement. First thing, number one, pray for the control of appetite. A lot of us overlook this appetite thing, but appetite has a deep spiritual significance. Because if we remember, the first sin that occurred on earth was linked to appetite. Read Genesis 3, 6. Jesus overcame his first temptation, which was also related to appetite. So Matthew 4, read, you can read Matthew 4, verses 2 to 4, and you'll see, you'll see that for yourself. And most importantly, appetite, just like any temptation, Jesus could help us to overcome it. There are plenty of scriptures that tell us about the overcoming power of Christ. 1 Corinthians 10, 13, Psalm 97, 10, 1 John 4, 4, Romans 6, 14. You could read it, pause the video and read them. These are scriptures show that God could give you the strength to overcome the desires that comes with the, the, these unnatural appetite that are destroying our health and contributing to weight gain and making weight loss difficult. I want to leave with this text, Virgin, because plenty of times when we come to the issue of diet, a lot of persons say, is this salvific? Will it affect my salvation? Why does it matter? And I'm trying to say to you, yes, it matters to your salvation. James 4.17 says, so then, if we do not do the good we know we should do, we are guilty of sin. So it's basically saying if you know something is right and you choose not to do the right thing, you're guilty of sin. So yes, if you choose to keep on doing the wrong thing and you're guilty of sin, yes, in my opinion, it could affect your salvation. So if we know the right way or a better way to eat to sustain our health and to maintain a healthy body weight, let us do the right thing. Let us do the right thing. So here are my sources of information that you could see. Number one source was the Bible and my other sources, and these are my references. And I just want to end with a short prayer. 
Let us pray, dear Heavenly Father, we look into the whole issue of diet and we see where we might not have been eating the ideal diet that you have designed for us to eat. And now, Father, we, we have a lot of diseases and we have a lot of sickness and we have over half of our members overweight and obese, Lord. So we're not where you, you designed for us to be and we have walked contrary to your will. So we ask for your strength and your power to overcome the urges of our unnatural appetite. Help us, oh Lord, to develop the taste for the appetite and for the diet that you'd want us to have. Help us to eliminate those things of our, out of our diet that contribute into weight gain and sickness and illness and help us to eat the way you want us to eat. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.